October 18th was Alaska Day. Our students, educators, and friends share their sides of the story. Good morning, I'm Harvey Brandt. I've been an educator. My name is Dion Brady Howard, and I have been teaching social studies here at Mount Edgecombe for 17 years. This is my 18th year. My name is Rebecca Polson. I'm an artist here in Sitka. My perspective has changed on Alaska Day from that of a celebration to more of a commemoration and learning more and more about Alaska history and Alaska people. I'm Mercedes Cash Talk and I'm from Anchorage and when I think of the sesquicentennial, I think of the sale of unfairly taken land that resulted in a better life today than what it could have been if it didn't happen. To me, Alaska Day is more about just the date when the territory of Alaska was transferred from the Russians who didn't own it to the Americans who shouldn't have bought it from someone who didn't own it. It represents all of the historical trauma and cultural change that came about from that. My name is Jasmine, I'm from Anchorage, Alaska, and how I feel about Alaska Day is that I understand the importance of it and recognizing that Alaska became a state, but it also comes with the factors of Alaska Natives losing their cultures and identities due to the fact that assimilation happened with the Russians coming into Alaska. I'm on the, the Alaska Historical Society and we saw it as a really great opportunity for Alaskans to learn more about our history. I think what it does is cause me as a history teacher to think about perspectives on history. There doesn't have to be only one perspective out there. There doesn't have to only ever be one perspective represented. We did a sorrowing song um, during the transfer ceremony, but at the base of New Tlaine, that's the original Tlingit name of it. Rather than attending the ceremony or being a part of Alaska Day on this historic sesquicentennial year in particular, to represent that the transfer of our land that was all our land as Alaska Natives isn't necessarily a cause for celebration and joy for someone who, who lost everything. Our Tlingit people were not even allowed at the first transfer ceremony. I'm Sunset Woods from Bethel, and I think that Alaska Day was a day where the United States gained land, but also the Native people lost sovereignty over their land. Today in Alaska, we are still affected by that story. In our Native cultures across the state, we've lost most of our language. We've lost a lot of our tradition. For example, when I was a student here at Mount Edgecombe 27 years ago, I could hear Yupik spoken around me all the time. The majority of people who were Yupik could speak it fluently. And if you ask people now, you'll hear a lot of people say they can mostly understand it, but they don't speak it. That change for the Yupik people came about really in just one generation. I mean, that's seemingly a really short period of time to experience that much loss. When I learned about the history of the Alaska Natives, it made me feel hurt because of what they went through and everything that happened to them. And like later on when I learned more about it, it was kind of like a relief because they got all their rights back and they like fought for what they believed in and they achieved it. In the Alaska Historical Society, we built a page on our website with primary source material about the actual Treaty of Session in 1867, and there are things like firsthand accounts of it. I got a small grant to research the decade following the transfer here in Sitka. I went to Washington, D.C. to look at Army documents from Sitka in that time and developed some school materials. Working a little bit with the Sharing Our Knowledge Conference, we had a theme of re-examining that history. I really like Alaska Day because of the parade. People from all segments of the town and from really little tiny babies all the way up to really old people come out and we're just Alaskans together. For many years, we prepared a float for our church and participated in the parade that way. We formed a group many years ago in 1972 called the 9th Infantry, which is a living history representation of Union side Civil War era soldiers who were sent here on the first Alaska Day in 1867. So we represent that. 
I typically am asked more recently to be master of ceremonies on Castle Hill for the Castle Hill reenactment ceremony of the transfer from Russia to the United States. I would like very much for Mount Edgecombe students and Sitka High School students and all Alaska students to recognize that they will view Alaska Day differently than their parents and that they should be writing Alaska history from their perspective. I believe that our Mount Edgecombe students should at the very least understand the purchase and understand the differences between what Seward's Day is and what Alaska Day is and why it's celebrated here in Sitka, but then also understand the ramifications of that, that purchase and that sale. I think that it should make you curious to learn more about the events from 150 years ago and what they meant, you know, the history from that time to now. I think Mount Edgecombe students should pay special attention in their history classes and think about their perspective on history from their their cultural outlook of their community, wherever it may be. Our very own Mount Edgecombe students are doing just that. Five MEHS students will be sharing their Alaskan stories to the community this Thursday and to their fellow students at the assembly this Saturday. Maggie and Kennedy ventured out to get others' thoughts on the parade.
And remember... Stay tuned!